Africa, the place where it all began. There's so much to see here at the Origin Center. The trace of people long gone. Our ancestors, way, way back. What were their lives like? This is a story that dates back millions of years. Ah, the Tawunska. The first evidence that supported the theory of evolution. What's that? I am Africa. If you follow this butterfly, you will go on a journey of the heart and mind. We will visit eight places, all of them unique and precious to humankind. Our journey starts in the cradle of humankind. Millions of years ago, your ancestors lived and breathed on the grassy foothills surrounding the Sterkfontein Caves. A third of all the evidence of human origins in Africa is found at just a few sites in South Africa. At Daum, Mokopane, and the Cradle. Ah, a hand that belonged to one of my ancestors. Actually, everyone's ancestors. We populate the entire planet. Yes, Nandi. Africa gave the world humanity. Maruping, that's a Setswana word. It means returning to the place of origin. Well, this is where it all began. <laughs> You're back. Let's now go to where South Africa, Botswana, and Limpopo meet. A great civilization began right here, where the Limpopo and the Shashi rivers meet. This is Mapungubwe, the site of South Africa's first kingdom. Yeah, yeah. 7 centuries ago a king looked down from this hill he saw as many as 9000 people living below they traded up the east coast of africa as far as arabia and india why do they call this place mapungubwe some say it means hill of jackals or place of rocks or even revered place my ancestors they made this golden rhino but what happened to these people? The climate here could no longer support their way of life. So they moved away. Next, we'll go deep into space and time. wide. You are at the center of this impact site. It's called the Friedeford Dome. Those distant hills are the eroded edges of the impact site. This must have been a huge explosion. Even if all the world's nuclear weapons were exploded at once, it wouldn't be as big as this explosion. A cataclysm was frozen in time. This next place feels like the ends of the Earth. This place, it's so hot and so vast. How does anything survive here? The Orange River is the lifeblood of this remote mountain desert. 
More plants grow here in the Richtersfeld than in any other desert in the world. Here's a half men's book. And this is a quiver tree. I can't believe people actually live here. Their ancient ancestors are the Koi Koi. They live in this desert like they did way before colonial times. Here you'll also find the Bosley's Busters, descendants of the Koi Koi and Cape Dutch farmers. These faces, they tell stories. Stories of determination, adventure and a remarkable culture. Come with me now to the highest mountains south of Kilimanjaro. these mountains, or Kashamba, they are a formidable barrier of spears. We are right next to the mountain kingdom of Lesotho. Here, you can climb the chain ladder, take a trip up the sunny pass, or visit the world's second highest waterfall, the Tugela Falls. All this grandeur stretches 150 kilometers from north to south. And across these mountains are caves with what is possibly the largest collection of rock art in Africa. We can see how the sand lived and what they believed. But by the late 1800s, most of the sand were dead. Only some managed to flee. And now for a kingdom where the riches aren't made of gold. This is a place like no other, and these are plants like no other. I've never seen plants like these before. This is called Fainbos. Wow! Every step you take, there's a new discovery. Stretching from the Cape Peninsula across 900 square kilometers, there are nine specially protected areas, which together make up the Cape Floral Kingdom. There are more different kinds of wild plants than there are in the whole of the United Kingdom. Just here, on Table Mountain alone. And now, let's go to one of the most beautiful coastal wetlands in Africa. Isimangaliso. This is Isimangaliso. It means miracle in Isuzu. Not so long ago, this place with its rich titanium resources was destined to be mined. Today, it is preserved. This place is like paradise, so abundant with life. Here and nowhere else in the world, sharks, crocodiles, hippos and sea turtles share the same waters. People are still using traditional ways to catch fish and living in a manner that is sustainable. You can walk for miles along this unspoiled beach all the way to Mozambique. Nandi, it's time for the last part of your journey. From Eden to exile. Imagine making this journey, leaving everyone and everything behind, and not really knowing if you'll ever come back. Yes, some even tried to swim their way to freedom. This was a place of banishment for hundreds of years, for lepers, the mentally ill, and political prisoners. Makana. Chief Alchumato, Said Abdurrahman Motoru, Robert Sobukwe, Nelson Mandela. The list is long. Imagine, Madiva spent 18 years in here. And he did the hardest thing. He forgave the people who put him here. Mm. 
This must never happen again. Nandi, your journey has come to an end. I'm back at the origin center. This has all happened in the blink of an eye. I see someone else's journey is about to begin. <laughs> <laughs>